Welcome to our kitchen. Today we prepare a medieval recipe, a meat pie with a flavorful filling, prepared with dried fruit and spices. We start with the ingredients. We need one chicken, dates, raisins, lard, and for the crust, remilled durum wheat semolina. And then the spices, nutmeg, cinnamon, cloves, and long pepper. First, we parboil the chicken. The cooking time changes depending on the size of the chicken. It has to be not completely cooked, but pay attention not to leave parts still raw. Meanwhile, we pit and chop the dates. We used five dates for one chicken. Now we prepare the spices. We grind in the mortar the nutmeg into grain sized pieces. Then we finally grind the cinnamon and long pepper while we leave the cloves whole. The medieval author specifies to use all cloves, slightly crushed nutmeg, and other spices of our choice. We chose two of the most used spices in the late medieval cookbooks. This recipe is part of an anonymous manuscript, written around at the end of the 13th century or the beginning of the 15th in southern Italy. This cookbook, conventionally called Anonimo Meridionale, is a very interesting source for late medieval cuisine. Now we need the dough with flour, salt and warm water. We used remilled durm wheat semolina to obtain a more elastic and resistant pasta sheet, but you can use any kind of white wheat flour. The crust for this pie is a simple pasta sheet. The author doesn't tell us how to make the crust for this pie, but we can find the description of this pie crust in other medieval and renaissance cookbooks. We divide the dough into two parts, one bigger and one smaller. We use the bigger part of the dough to roll a pasta sheet not too thin that we we'll use as bottom crust. This first pasta sheet must be larger than the pie plate. Pies usually filled with meat, fish or vegetables were quite common starting from the Middle Ages, and in particular during the Renaissance. We grease the pie plate with lard and then lay the bottom crust. You can use oil instead of lard, or just slightly flour the pie plate. Now we use the smaller dough part to prepare the upper pie crust. We roll a thinner and smaller sheet. In the cookbooks of the same century, we can find other variations of this recipe, all quite different. This was a common practice in the Middle Ages. Any cook offered his own interpretation, frequently with substantial changes. Then we cut the upper crust to obtain a disc the same size as the pie plate. When the chicken has simmered for 30 or 40 minutes, depending on the size, we let it cool a bit and debone it, keeping the broth. Then we melt a good amount of lard in a pan. When it's hot, we add the deboned chicken, two pinches of salt, and all the other ingredients, nutmeg, all cloves, chopped dates, raisins, cinnamon and long pepper. We mix and let it cook for 10 minutes. 
Edina beat off Chicken Brothel. Double cooking the meat is a technique we find in several medieval recipes. It will help to obtain a softer feeling, preventing the risk to make the meat dry. We place the filling on the pie crust and cover with a thinner crust. If the bottom crust is too big, we cut the excess parts. Then we moisten the edge of the crust with a bit of water and seal the pie. The author gives no directions about how to seal the pie. We have just a few paintings that date to the following centuries, useful to understand the historical evolution of this successful dish. We cook the chicken pie in the oven for 30 minutes, but the cooking time changes depending on the size of the pie, the thickness of the crust, and the kind of flour you used. The medieval author suggests moistening the upper crust with a bit of water before the pie is completely cooked. In this way, it will cook evenly. You can just sprinkle the water or use a brush. This flavorful chicken pie is a delicious example of one of the most common dishes in a medieval banquet. If you're interested in ancient foods and flavors, or you're just looking for unusual and delicious recipes, please subscribe our channel.